Hi everyone, Dr. Lee here from Your Vet Online, and tonight I'm going to be talking all about gastric di dilatation and volvulus or bloat. Now the reason why I'm going to talk about that tonight is because I had a very interesting consult a couple of nights ago. It was a person who was in the middle of nowhere. Their dog, well, they thought their dog had bloat and they were really worried because they couldn't get to a veterinarian for about three hours because they were camping in this, in what we call the wop wops. So they got in touch with us and wanted us to help them with doing whatever we could to try and help their dog. So we managed to safely do some things to help them and they ended up going on their way and getting to the vet clinic and their dog had surgery. And luckily everyone's fine, the dog survived and they're doing really, really well. But anyway, that made me consider and think, gosh, really, I should be making a topic on GDV and bloat because it is something that we do see reasonably often in our larger breed dogs. And yeah, it can be really distressing for everyone. GDV is one of those things that basically you either do surgery or you euthanize your pet. And that's not something that we really want to be doing. So, um, and, and unfortunately also, the surgery is fraught with complications and danger. It's not, look, if you catch the dog early enough with the problem, then um, success rates are, are, can be very, very good. But it is um, very much time dependent and of course, dependent on the surgeon as well. So, that's what I thought I'd talk to you all about tonight. I'm going to be, it's going to be a little bit um, short and sweet. Basically, I wanted to concentrate more on um, the signs that we might see, um, how, what, what sort of dogs are predisposed to this, and also what you can do to prevent it happening. So if you've got any questions, make sure you pop them in the question section just down below, and then we can, I can answer them as we go. And yeah, hopefully we'll all get something good out of this. Okay, so if you haven't met me before, I'm Dr. Lee, and I'm the founder of Your Vet Online, and I'm a veterinarian myself. Your Vet Online provides 24-7 access to veterinarians um, for anybody that's got an animal and whoever has questions about their animals, whether they're cats, dogs, horses, or pocket pets. So we're available 24-7, and the best part of that is that no appointment is necessary. Basically, you go online, you book your time, basically you pay your money, your consult fee, and away you go, you get, um, you get, go straight through to a veterinarian and you can get all your questions answered. So it's, so it's a really good system if you need information straight away and you can't get to a veterinarian, um, like to a veterinary clinic, or you don't have a vet local at all. All right. So let's get right back to it and let's just thinking, start thinking about the signs of bloat and what we should, we really need to be looking out for when we um, have a dog. Now there, I will go into a little bit later the types of dogs that are more prone to this, but generally speaking we are talking about our large dogs. Whenever you notice your dog reaching like dry reaching so they look like they want to vomit but they aren't actually producing anything that is one of the hallmarks that then is a problem now of course sometimes it could be something else but in a larger breed dog that's doing that you've got to be pretty worried now often they're doing that, they've got hypersalivation, so they're drooling, they're just looking really uncomfortable, and they may have a distended belly. 
Now, some of these dogs that I've got that are a bigger breed dog, they have a very deep chest and it can be quite hard to tell whether they have got a distended belly. So what I tend to do is I think about where their ribs are, where their hind leg is, and seeing if there's a nice sort of gap in the middle there. And if it's extended and sort of blowing out a little bit, then, you know, like it's sort of blowing out, then I'm worried. I also can do the ping test. And this is where I ping it like a rubber ball. And if it gives me that rubber ball type hollow ping sound, then I'm getting even more worried because that's telling me that there's a lot of gas in there and we need to do something about it. As the severity of the bloat increases, um, what we might see is our dogs often become quite weak. They don't want to stand up or they might be wanting to stretch quite a lot, like do the prayer, sitting in the prayer position. And often their respiratory rate increases quite a lot. So they just look really kind of very worried looking and um, they're not really painful in their tummy to touch, but they just look really uncomfortable. And as it progresses even more and perhaps when the gut actually twists, because the whole thing is that GDV isn't just when the gut blows up into a big ball, it's actually when it twists on itself. So often they do a 180 or a 360 and what that does is it twists off all the blood vessels and when that happens, that's when we start to see dogs go into toxic shock and they become septic and they become really sick. So if your dog is suffering from that, if you lift up his gums, you'll see that the gums are often very pale in colour or they might even have a brick red appearance. And if that's the case, then it's a very dire situation and you need to get to a vet straight away. And at this stage, your dog will be in a lot of pain as well. So, yeah. So if you've got a larger breed dog, if you've got a dog that's showing any sort of signs of bloat or if there's any signs that they are dry reaching, you need to get to a vet ASAP. This isn't the situation necessarily. Like, you, like I know I just said earlier that we had the online consult. That was a situation where those people were a long way from their vet and they, could, they needed to do something so that they could get their dog to the vet alive. And we managed to do that. But in general terms and in every other sort of situation, you just need to get your dog to the vet as soon as you notice anything like that. It is far better for you to be um, told by the vet that you're wasting your time and that you've just had a little bit of a car ride than to have a dog that's um, that you've waited and you're just umming and ahhing about. Because honestly, time is of the essence with these things. Um, I just thought I'd show you um, x-ray, sorry. Um, this is an x-ray of a dog with a GDV. And here what we can see is that the that big sort of gassy mass in the in, in this picture is actually the stomach and you can see a quite bright uh, line there. It looks like a bit of a nose. That's where the gut, has, the stomach has actually twisted on itself. So it's quite a nasty situation there and that's one of the hallmarks. Like when you first get to the vet clinic, one of the first things that a vet will do is take what we call a right lateral x-ray, which is what this, this shot is showing us and basically that's telling us immediately that your dog must have surgery. Let's just have a quick discussion about what some of the risk factors are for a GDV. So although we have been seeing this for many many years like GDV is not a new thing and it's but one of the things is that we still don't clearly understand exactly why it happens and 
all we know is that there are risk factors. So we don't know the exact cause, but we do know that certain things increase the risk of it happening. So some of those things that we can talk about are things that are related to get the, the stomach itself. So some of these dogs may have an increase in gastrin concentration. They might have a reduced stomach motility and perhaps they have slowed gastric emptying. Again, this is, this is just a presumption and there's been no studies that has actually been able to confirm this, but it's, it's a high assumption. We also know that the way the dog eats plays a big role in, in this um, problem. So if you feed your dog a very large meal and they eat it all at once in a big hurry and it's maybe just one meal a day and they get everything that they need for that day, then that places your dog at more risk than a dog that has multiple smaller meals. Also, if the dog is inclined to eat really fast, that can cause problems too. Yeah, so basically you a dog that eats very, very fast and is gulping air as they go is often prone to GDV. And base, basically it's because, yeah, they're, they're becoming aero, what we call aerophagic. They're filling their tummy up with air as well as, um, as well as the food. So yeah, not great. And then the other thing is exercising them straight after you've fed them. So they've got a full tummy and you're basically expecting like you, they're playing or they're going on a run or doing whatever straight after they're fed. That increases the risk of this happening hugely. You also have things like the type of dog. So we do know that large breeds of dogs such as Basset Hounds, such as the German short haired pointer. Here's a nice picture of one I found today. Um, the Great Dane. The Great Dane is what we call the poster child of GDV. Um, we see these a lot. And German Shepherds, actually, I'm just thinking about how many German Shepherds I've actually seen with um, GDV. There are a lot. So, um, yeah, Bull Mastiffs. Um, I've even had a Doberman and a Dachshund. I've actually had a Dachshund that's had a GDV. Um, they quite often bloat, like I've seen heaps of Dachshunds bloat. I've also seen lots of Foxies bloat. <laughs> I think that's because they eat something they shouldn't be and they're eating in a hurry. <laughs> and so they fill themselves right up and have eaten far too much. Often dogs that are really underweight will actually um, get GDV. Again, we're not 100% sure of the mechanisms of why this might occur, but we do know that happens. And it also seems that quite a few older dogs get it. Like I do know that um, a lot of the dogs, sadly, that I've seen, they're in their later years. You know, they're, they're past 10 years old and they so just out of the blue, we can't say that they've had lots of exercise. We can't say that they've gulped down their meal or any of those things. They're just an older dog and just one day, they just get it. We also know that dogs that are highly anxious or have a situation that places them in, high, in, in a high anxiety state can result in a predisposing them to GDV. So we often see this in stormy times of the year. So um, we might see more cases. So that might be related to thunderstorms um, and anxiety related to that. Sometimes when people move houses and there's that whole shift in everything that's going on, you know, the dog might be quite um, sensitive to that. Dogs that are prone to uh, separation anxiety, they can be an extra, they can be extra prone to GDV as well. We also know that if your dog has ever had its spleen removed, well, that's going to give a lot more room in that gut for the stomach to twist around. So any dog that's had a splenectomy, they are also um, tend to be a little bit higher at risk. And one of the things that I find quite interesting, and this is a good tip if you are 
uh, purchasing a new dog and or a puppy or a dog where you know the history of its parents and you know from a breed or something like that always just ask have any of their relatives had a GDV because there is there does appear to be a heritable factor involved here so if the mother or the father brothers or sisters auntie uncles that sort of thing have ever had a GDV then your dog may be more inclined to get one too okay let's have a quick discussion about the prevention and I know this is what everyone's like wants to hear because this is super important and it's something that um, if you own a deep chested dog a large breed dog then it's really worthwhile that you consider these things now the absolute best thing that you can do to help prevent your dog get a GDV if you've got one of those dogs is to have a gastropexy and basically what that is is surgery where we um, we do this either at the time of spay or neuter or we can do them at around seven or eight months of age and basically we go in and we attach the stomach to the wall of the um, abdomen and what it does I know it sounds really weird but basically it stops it from flipping so you're if, if I've got my um, body wall here I've, and I've got my stomach here, I'm attached my stomach to that body wall and it can't flip. It can, it can move around, it can still get bigger, or it can still go down, but it can't do a big flip. And so um, it's one, it's the best way of preventing GDV but yeah, generally speaking we, we do these surgeries when your dog is quite young so that no problems occur later on. The other big things to do which are nothing to do with anything that a vet does is basically we recommend that you feed smaller meals and you or you feed them more frequently during the day so instead of having one large meal once a day you might break that into three smaller meals. And the idea behind that is that they just don't have as much food sticking, sitting in their stomach and hot and fermenting and carrying on. Now, some people like to say that kibble is implicated in this. Again, it does, there's not a lot of studies that actually have proven that. So it doesn't really matter what you feed your dog. And from my experience of actually being involved with these surgeries and doing these surgeries, I've actually pulled out very interesting things out of these stomachs. And I tell you what, kibble is often not just the only thing that I've, I've found. So I've, I've found um, a lot of these dogs have actually been fed just plain old meat. So I don't know. I don't know why there's that. People keep saying that that's a problem because it is not my experience having done these surgeries. Yeah, this is a, a nice little picture of us getting rid of, trying to get rid of some of the um, gas and everything from this dog's stomach. So that's a stomach tube. You can see there we've put that in through the mouth and we're just trying to remove all that gas and, and any food. Sometimes we can't do that. Sometimes the um, stomach is completely um, is completely twisted, so we can't actually get the tube in, but that's just um, one of the things that we do to try and remove any gas. Now, some if we one of the ways to slow down your dog eating and so that they don't um, rush their food eating their food so much is to actually use um, a sort of like a feeding bowl or what we call a slow feeder um, here's an example of the type of slow feeders so you've got the kongs you've got this type of one sometimes you have um, these ones that are available that are called maize bowls the other thing is to consider just sprinkling food across the ground. And so your dog has to go hunting and sniffing it out. 
that's a great way to not only um, provide your dog with some something to do, but it slows down their eating a lot, so that they um, yeah they're a lot slower, and so it's so it seems to not um, cause these problems. Some people will elevate a food bowl. Does that help? We're still not sure. It can help prevent taking in too much air when they're eating, but we're not 100% sure whether that is actually um, worthwhile, a worthwhile process. Um, now, if you your dog is ever getting their spleen out for any particular reason, as I said before, not having a spleen can leaves a lot more room for the stomach to twist. So if your dog's ever having that surgery, just ask your vet and just say, are you pexing the stomach at the same time? Because that's a very good opportunity to do that and it will help, um, and especially in these deep chested dogs. The other thing is, as I mentioned before, if you have got a dog that's very anxious, there are lots of medications that we can um, help you with and to, to stop that those, those terrible anxious feelings, such as when there's a storm phobia, you know, thunderstorms, whether it's separation anxiety or any of those things. So if, if that's the case and that's a real problem for your larger breed dog, then yeah, look, talk to your veterinarian or talk to us here at Your Vet Online about any of the medications that we can put your dog on to help them with that. Because anxiety, as I said before, is one of the main causes of this sort of thing to happen. Is it possible to do this with horses? No, unfortunately, no. Um, but horses don't really get a twisted stomach. A lot of the problems with colic in horses is actually related to um, twists that are caused by completely different things. So um, you don't very often, um, yeah, yeah, there's nothing, unfortunately, there's no surgeries like the preventative type surgeries for a horse colic. But thanks. No, that's a really good question. Um, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, Hayley, I see that you're, is surgery experience expensive? Now, I'm assuming you mean that's for um, the PEXI. Look, it really is dependent on the veterinary clinic um, who's doing it, so I can't give guidelines for that. When it's combined with a, another surgery, such as your um, a spay or a neuter, then it, of course it may be a little cheap. Well, it, it seems a little cheaper than if you get it done uh, at the, just by itself, but that's because you've already got your animal under anesthesia. So that's just something you'd have to talk to your regular veterinarian about and just ask them. Some vets will do it um, via laparoscopic um, measures. So, but if you're doing a dog spay and you're in there anyway, then you might as well just just do it with full visualization. I've actually got a picture here. Um, of a dog that had, I'm not going to show you a picture of the GDV because it's quite confronting, but this is a picture of, um, of the post-surgery um, GDV. And as you can see, we have to do make a really large incision because these surgeries are hard, like they're really tough. And, you know, you can see on this picture, there's all those cords and things. That's an ECG machine. So when a dog has, suffers from a GDV, you, uh, you, it's really, it's, it's tough. Like they become what we call hypovolemic. So they lose a lot of their blood pressure. They become, there's lots of toxins that circle around the body and they affect the heart. And often we actually have problems where the heart can have little fibrillations and um, arrhythmias and we have to work on that. 
Their electrolytes can also go very skew with. So it's a really, really tough surgery and it's really, really tough medically to help them afterwards. Now, I'm not saying that it's not worthwhile doing it though because I've been involved with quite a, oh, yeah, actually quite a few GDVs and with excellent success rates. So they're, but the, as I said earlier, your best bet is to get them, as soon as you recognize that there's something a little bit wrong with your dog, maybe they're reaching a little bit, they're drooling, they've got that ping on their side of their belly, then you get them into the clinic and you just get them looked at. Because as I said earlier, it's way better to be safe than sorry. All right then guys. <laughs> Dr. Tom, is that a little hat clap? Thank you very much. All right, um, so do you have to get the air out for bloat? Okay, so when you, you take your dog into the clinic, basically the first thing that um, your vet will do is assess whether their, their abdomen is extended. Now, if they see that immediately and they're kind of all set up, often they'll take a very quick right lateral x-ray and that tells us whether it is twisted or whether it's just a standard bloat with no twist if it's twisted then we have to act really quick quickly and you as an owner have to decide a am i going to do surgery or b am i going to have to euthanize my dog now i know that sounds really tough but there are only two options with this problem um there if the if there's a twist there's no way the dog is going to be able to untwist that by itself now when you get the ear out okay so then we go back to i'll find this little picture this picture here this is where we try we put a stomach tube down and we try to push that down into the stomach to let the air out now if the stomach has twisted and it really depends on how much it's twisted. If it's only twisted sort of a little bit, then we might be able to just ease that tube in and let some air out. But if the stomach is really twisted and it's blocked the esophagus and everything going into the stomach, then there's no way that we're going to be able to let any air out. So it's pretty impossible. So if that's the case, then we need to... Um, think about doing other things. So that like might be putting a needle in his stomach and letting the gas out that way. And if you remember what I was talking about earlier, right at the very beginning, um, um, I I was saying how we how we helped a person who was out in the middle of nowhere. That's actually what we ended up doing with them because they had a really really. Um, comprehensive medicine kit with them so we advised them how to do some stuff themselves with the medic medicine kit they had so that it gave us a little bit of time to get to the vet clinic but that's not something you'd be doing by yourself so yeah um, you yeah if there is bloat you do you do take you do try to get the air out. Now, just plain old bloat. I mean, I had an old foxy who used to love getting into lots of food and occasionally she would get bloat and it was just she ate far too much. So basically, I didn't really tend to do much. We just supported her. Um, occasionally, I had to put her on fluids because she would get a little, <laughs> yeah, a little bit under the weather with that and a bit of pain relief but she just had to ride it out and yeah you know these dogs that just get into things when they shouldn't get into things that was that was my old girl pippa but yeah it happens to us all so but basically the main things i want everyone to remember is those signs so if you are tuning in just for the first time we want to remember that we want to try and make sure that um, we can recognize any of the little signs that might indicate that our dogs are getting a GDV. So that's things like unproductive vomiting, um, they might be just reaching, they're drooling, and they have that distended abdomen. 
So guys, I hope that's helped. If you, uh, let me see. Da -da. Uh, 10 years of age, my German Shepherd had the surgery and later the had the spleen removed. <clears throat> Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. That's good that that happened and it's a good result, Robert. Excellent. All right then, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you missed some of the start, go back and um, do a quick rewind. It'll be available for you to have another listen to. Um, if you are keen to keep up to date with everything, I'll put a link up so that you can join our newsletter. I send that out every Thursday it tells you what's going on on our tutorials and gives you any tips that come up um, during the during the week that I think you all might be interested in. All right then, hope you guys have a great evening and I'll talk to you next Thursday. Bye for now.